Hello, welcome to today's episode of the Academy. Now today we're going to deviate from our normal format. Uh, we won't be reviewing any, anyone's works or what have you and talking about how they apply the tabletop. Instead, this is actually going to be a video response to a video that Itik Beer put up. I'll put a link down below. Uh, probably throw it up in a card in one of these two locations. Now, what's interesting is his concept, his video, was discussing the idea of list tailoring. And it got me thinking. I was trying to draft a response, a comment to him in the, you know, in the comment section. Realized it was starting to write a paragraph or two. So I figured, nope, this, this warrants a video on its own. Because it got me thinking. <clears throat> and it actually applies and fits within the concepts of my Academy series. So let's talk about list tailoring. How does this make have anything to do with the real world, right? Now, in fact... Before you do any type of military action, there has to be planning involved, correct? Now, that's what list building is all about, and that's what list tailoring is about. It's about that planning. Now, Itik brought up three, sorry, Nick brought up three different uh, angles. He's doing basically just friendly games. The second was friendly games in which you're always losing, and the third was tournaments. So let's kind of talk through this whole concept and apply it to those three areas. Now, I don't know how many of you have actually watched my various narrative campaigns and narrative scenarios, but in each of the cases uh, where I had those, I developed a certain set of uh, victory conditions, right? And what I did beforehand was provide each player with two, or basically a mission briefing with two key sets of information. One was possibly what his opponent was likely to bring. Now it wasn't down to the specific units necessarily or what his list was, but just a general idea if there were limitations or certainties or things that would, should play into his uh, list building, I put that in there. And secondly was the mission objectives, which might be different for both players. So both players could actually build an army, tailor a list if you will, to meet not only the objectives of that particular mission with the best units possible, but also meet the opponent and what he was likely to bring. That is very much like you see in the real world. When orders are given for an operation, those are usually given after a lot of planning has gone ahead. And they select certain units and equip certain units based on what forces they're going to actually engage and what their objectives are. If you need to advance you know, several dozens of miles in a day, you don't send that order to the infantry unless they're motorized. Then you can send it to it, right? So you have to plan to have a motorized infantry unit take that particular order. If you're going to go up against tanks, the, the units you have to assign that order to have to have added tank capabilities, right? So in the military, you list tailor. You tailor your forces to match the plan that you have the objectives, and likely the opposition. So, this tailoring is part of military uh, science. Not in those words, but it is, okay. So let's take a look at how this plays out, if you will. In Nick's first point, he was talking about uh, between friends, right? List tailoring between friends. Do you just come up, show up with a, your pre-made list and just take your lumps, whatever direction it is? Or do you kind of play to or design to what you know your opponent is likely to bring. Most of us play with, you know, in groups or close circles where we know what our opponents are likely to bring. We know what's in their collection oftentimes. And we might know even their way of playing. So we kind of, even if it's subconsciously, we build lists with those concepts in mind. So it's perfectly natural. Of course, you can take it to an extreme. But is that necessarily a bad thing? Now, it depends on the reason you do it. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the extent to which you do it. There's, hopefully the reason you're doing it is a good one, and uh, I'm going to give you the my what I think is the primary reason to list Taylor, again, in a friendly game. When I was being taught to fence, it was drilled into me that you never, under any circumstances, against any opponent do less than your best. Even if the person is much less experienced than you, you do not, if you will, dumb down your abilities. You do everything you can to defeat them. 
Anything less is just nothing but disrespect. And looking back at that, the reality is you are disrespecting your opponent. Number one, you are assuming that, first of all, they're not as good as you. That right there is an insult. The second thing is you're also depriving them of the chance to learn something. Now, a lot of us learn from our failures a lot more than from our successes. So, by putting your best forward, which might often mean tailoring your list to accomplish the mission, you are depriving your opponent of an opportunity to learn effectively. Okay, So that's the angle I come from. So even in friendly games, now my friends kind of know the way I play. They kind of know what I'm likely to bring. But I do bring a couple different lists, usually pre-made, because I kind of want to go into it knowing if I'm likely to face a certain opponent. I know kind of what armies he's going to bring and the makeup of that. So I'll build a list that would be able to handle that. If well, Maybe I'll make two lists, uh, depending on my mood that day. And I might not know until I get there. Do I want to play, like for example, I, I love my, my flying circuses, so do I have an Air Force heavy uh, list or not? You know, it's something like that. It's not, is it all anti-tank or all anti-infantry kind of, you know, horde versus elite two lists. It's two lists that are both balanced, both could work, against whatever that opponent's got, but it's just the style of play would be different, right? So I'm putting my best effort behind it so that my opponent has something good, challenging to face. You know, the f most fun we've had has always been in games where it was close. It's not when you get walked all over, right? So list tailoring against an opponent can actually encourage that close game. Now, the second thing Nick talked about was list tailoring to an opponent when you all you, you constantly get beat by them because all they want to do is table you. They want to defeat you. They want to soundly, roundly destroy you. Well, still, list tailoring is what you should be doing. You know what they're going to bring and why they're going to bring it. And now is your chance by tailoring your list toward that set of threats to learn, to practice different combinations to try to defeat that. So you learn your army's synergies and hopefully tactically apply them on the table. So list tailoring is something you have to do if you want to get better in that situation. It makes perfect sense. And then finally, uh, in tournaments. Nick brought up a really good point that I never really thought about before. That it's very natural to list tailor in tournaments. Because what you're doing is you're tailoring your list to the meta most of the time. Now, if you go to tournaments a lot, you may know a lot of the tournament goers within your small area. And you might have a general idea of what they're going to do. You might even practice against them. And so your lists will generally take into account these things that you know about your opponent. Which is amazingly similar to most of military theory. Because you, before you take any of your troops into the field toward your opponent, you want all the intelligence you can come up with about what they have, what they're likely to use, how they're going to use it, and then build your force to oppose that using information. So list tailoring is nothing more than building your list based off of intelligence about your opponent. Now, there are there is this is possible to take this to an extreme that's bad. And the one place where that is, I think, you're breaking things and you're really disrespecting your opponent is when you list tailor after you know exactly what's in your opponent's list. That really, unless it's part of the scenario where one player is given complete knowledge of the opponent's forces before building his list, that's not the case. It's, in my view, it's cheating because the opponent has not had the luxury of building and bringing the units that are ideal to handle your combination of units, but you are being given the chance to tailor completely. Now, unfortunately, I've seen players that have that do that. They come in with their list, so they say. Of course, it's on Battlescribe or something, so it's not a physical paper that you can look at right away. And as you're unboxing, they're getting their list. Well, they're actually tweaking their list to counter the stuff that you're putting down on 
you know, in your ready space. And then, of course, when it's time to show list, here's their battle scribe army. It's, well, if they have to resort to that, they must not be very good players, right? So, think of it this way. If you beat, if you beat them anyway, that just makes you that much better, and really, I hope they realize that they're just that much poorer <laughs> if they can't beat you with that kind of list tailoring going on. So, so that's my response to Nick's video on list tailoring. Uh, he makes some very good points. I would strongly encourage you to take a look at that video uh, and honestly comment. Think of you know, let them know your your opinions and what have you. But this is what I thought we'd I do today. Just Going to show you how does this whole list tailoring idea, which gets a lot of bad press, fit in with military theory. So, there you have it. Hope you learned something. Comment below. And again, please uh, share this with other friends of yours who really could use this information and help them understand how to apply some of these concepts to the tabletop. All right. Catch you later. See you in the next video. Bye bye.